Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 22nd of March, and it's World Water Day. And a big happy birthday to William Shatner, Reese Witherspoon, and Constance Wu. A damning report into the Metropolitan Police in London has found that it's institutionally racist and misogynist. It describes a deep-seated homophobia in the force, which also failed to protect the public from officers who abuse women. The review was commissioned after Sarah Everard's murder and carried out by Baroness Casey, who says the Metropolitan Police needs a complete overhaul. The Met's problems are so severe and so big, they need to improve that response and improve what they're doing for women and for Londoners and black Londoners much more than they are. The head of Britain's biggest force, Sir Mark Rowley, doesn't think the problems are institutional but says he accepts the findings. And I'm resolved that we will reform policing. This is a very upsetting read. You can't read this report and not be upset embarrassed and humbled by some of what's been said. The Independent Office for Police Conduct says this must be a watershed moment for the leadership of the Met Police, which should seize the opportunity to fundamentally change its culture. London's Mayor Sadiq Khan explained why he wasn't shocked by the findings. Although the report is incredibly sad, one of the darkest days in the Met Police's history, for those of us who are Londoners, uh, from my background, uh, the report didn't surprise me, actually. Uh, because our experiences as you know, people of colour is one where we have been treated differently. Shaggy-haired millionaire Boris Johnson will be questioned by MPs on Wednesday over allegations he lied about lockdown-breaking parties at Downing Street. The former Prime Minister's admitted misleading Parliament, but insists it wasn't on purpose. The Cross-Party Privileges Committee published his so-called defence dossier in advance, but said the 52 pages contained no new evidence. The BBC's John Kay tried to gauge Rishi Sunak's take on it all, but instead, much like his predecessor, the PM did plenty of ducking and diving. That, that's ultimately something for Boris Johnson and he'll have the committee process to go through and that's a matter for Parliament. That's not what I'm focused on. Mr Johnson, the man in charge of government at the time, says he was never given a warning that the gatherings broke Covid rules. If the committee finds he did mislead MPs in a reckless or intentional way, he could face punishment including losing his common seat. SNP MP John Nicholson says Boris mocked the truth throughout his political career. The public begin to think that they're all rascals. Take that Boris Johnson. Not a word he said was true. He smirks as he tries uh, to deceive us. That affects all of us, doesn't it? And it has a crucially damaging effect on our ability to persuade the public to listen to the experts. China's president says his country is impartial over the war in Ukraine after holding talks with Russian leader Vladimir Putin. Xi Jinping presented a 12-point peace plan, but Putin claimed the West has no interest in an end to the fighting. They met in Moscow just days after an international arrest warrant was issued for the Russian leader over alleged war crimes. Jen Stoltenberg says there's a pattern of the pair building a stronger partnership. Of course, the meeting um, that takes place in Moscow is part of a pattern we have seen uh, over the last years where China and Russia are coming closer and closer. In the military domain, they have uh, joint exercises, joint patrols, naval and air patrols, uh, in the economic domain and also in the political and diplomatic uh, domain. Putin, meanwhile, was quick to criticise Britain for this revelation about the Challenger 2 battle tanks it's sending to Ukraine. It became known that United Kingdom announced their supply, not just of the tanks, but also depleted uranium uh, ammunition and we will have to react to this. Russia's new deal to save the Northern Ireland Protocol is running into trouble. The House of Commons is due to vote on the Windsor framework on Wednesday. The new agreement was launched with much fanfare and a visit from EU President Ursula von der Leyen, but the DUP have already said they'll vote no. The revised pact's designed to fix trade issues and allow for a say over some EU rules. Downing Street believes it's the best deal for Northern Ireland and the whole of the UK, but now a group of Brexit-backing MPs are also concerned. The European Research Group's legal experts have been examining the plan and Chair Mark Francois outlined some of their findings. The Stormont break is practically useless and the framework itself has no exit other than through a highly complex legal 
process. Still to come on the Smart 7, it's all kicking off on the succession red carpet and Arsenal's women struggle in Munich right after this. Welcome back. The Women's Champions League takes centre stage this week before the next round of Euro 2024 qualifiers kicks off. Tuesday night saw Arsenal's women take on the mighty Bayern Munich in Germany for the first leg of the quarterfinals. And despite 14 shots on goal from Arsenal in the second half, it ended 1-0 to the Germans. The second leg at the Emirates takes place next week and Arsenal striker Caitlin Ford wants the fans to turn up and help them qualify for the semi-finals. Unfortunately, it wasn't our night tonight with the result, but we go again the second leg at the Emirates next week. The Bayern fans turned up tonight and they really helped them push through, but we're going to need you guys more than ever next week to help us and help us get the job done. So come on, get to the Emirates and let's go do this. Succession star Brian Cox went full Logan Roy as the cast took to the red carpet for the season four premiere in New York. As Sarah Snook, who plays Shiv Roy, debuted her baby bump, Cox, who heads up the dysfunctional Roy family, got into character by yelling at some photographers. The highly anticipated HBO drama returns on Sunday, and just before that, you can catch the first episode of Daft Doris's new Sweet Sound of Succession podcast. So, what's in store for the final series, Logan? I think we're going to see a lot of fascinating rides, and it's a bit like a roller coaster, you know, and I think it's finishing in the true succession, succession style. I mean, I'm, I think people are going to love it. New series The Diplomat will see the American star Kerry Russell play Kate Wyler, who lands a high-profile political job amid an international crisis. The US government enlists her to serve as the US ambassador to the UK. Also starring Rufus Sewell, Homeland and the West Wing producer Deborah Carr's behind this one. And with a first look from Netflix, it's clear Russell's no Disney princess. I am not Cinderella. I'm here for 30 funerals. The only T-length garment I packed is a burqa. I have a black suit and I have another black suit. And I'm not getting dressed by someone named Pippa so a women's magazine can ask who I'm wearing and what advice I have for little girls. This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Dogs.